Okay, here we are with video number two. This video is basically titled, Why Auto Supports Suck? And How Should I Really Orient My Miniatures? So I'm going to be dropping some knowledge on you so you guys can get prints like you're seeing uh, flash across the screen now. Of particular interest, uh, when we get to the back of the Gunslinger model, check out the back of that model because the front, you'll see, is very clear. But a lot of people can do that. But, but, but take note of the back of the model and how clean it is. And we're going to talk about how orientation and support placement, you know, get you that kind of back. Uh, and the Umber Hulk model is from the Artisan Guild Patreon. The extremely cool Gunslinger model is from On Mioji Patreon. That's O N M I O J I. If you guys want to check them out, uh, some really good artists have some really cool stuff. I apologize for the quick picture of me, just so you can see what my ugly mug looks like since I'm not really on camera. And uh, stay tuned for more parts after this. Enjoy the video. So you can see that we have one, two, three models reflected over here. The, uh, the base for the Umber Hulk, the head for the Umber Hulk, and this really cool human gunslinger model. And let's start off with the head. I'm going to select it with a left click. I'm going to go to the missiles into the pizza box and we're going to go to supports. We are working with auto supports because the point of this video is to show you why I absolutely hate auto supports and why they will fail you. So with the head being selected uh, and we're going to do the only thing I ever mess with here is the density. The higher this number, the greater the coverage on the model. 75% is very high density level. So let's go with that with we're not going to use light supports ever basically on auto support because your model's going to fail so normally uh, you want to use heavy or medium let's let's start with heavy i'm going to go from the platform and okay perfect example of why i hate auto supports look at this this part of the mandible well i guess these are mandibles this i'm not sure what this is let's call it a tooth for lack of a better term. This tooth is unsupported. Look, this one is supported nicely. This one is just hanging in the air. It's not gonna print. This is an auto support print failure right away. Uh, even worse, if, the, if you do it like, if you had hit auto support on a model and then print, not only might this fail, uh, some of the resin, if it doesn't adhere to the bottom part here when it tries to print, will be cured resin floating in your vat, which could cause you a lot of problems later. So this is exhibit A for why auto supports totally suck. Let's see what happens if we remove those and let's go to medium supports. Again, 75% density, which is a very high coverage. Look, again, that tooth is unsupported. So let's, let's take one minute to just talk about how you tell if something's unsupported if it doesn't jump out at you like this. There's two ways to do it in the program. This bar on the left shows you your layers. So if you deconstruct the print, right, this shows you printing from the ground up now. Boop, 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 boop. All the supports, the model starting. And then look at this. Here's that tooth we said was unsupported. As you can see, it's just Right now it's printing in the air, which means it won't print. This is the other tooth. You see it's starting from here, it's supported, it's going to print fine. These other areas that would be floating have supports in them, so that they should print fine. This is your failure. Okay. I don't actually even deconstruct anymore when I'm looking for these spots. I use a different technique, which I'll show you now, which is I rotate the model till I'm underneath the model one thing you'll notice you see the color red let me get rid of these supports so you can see what I'm talking about the brighter the red the less supported the area is mean the more it needs supports okay so you can see if you mouse over from the bottom wherever you see a circle on its own like this like this like this 
That means it's a low point on the model, an unsupported point. Let's look at the teeth. See, circles. They don't join and not be circles until here. Okay? So here, you see the circle? Unsupported island. So I'm not going to go into all about uh, support placement in this video, but for instance, where you see that island, you would normally manually add your support. You'd add a support, add a support. Okay? So anywhere else that we saw an island like that, we would add supports. Like, for instance, the tip of these is obviously it's going to be an island. I mean, this tip is going to help support the whole model. So you, you would definitely need to put something heavy there. So just looking at the head briefly, the fact that it failed here on auto supports means auto support sucks. So let's move on to the base. So even something as simple as a base, some people will tell you print it flat on the plate. And I, I've done that before when I first started. But what happens is if you have good adhesion, which you should, it's really, really hard to get off. I actually broke a spatula trying to get a base off. And also when you're trying to ram the bases off, you can easily damage them, uh, which you don't want. And also if you have a model on top of here and you're supporting it, and any of the supports come down and the base of the supports touch the base of your model, which will happen often, when you go to remove those, you will damage the base. So it's a really good idea to not just print them flat like that. So let's select it, go here, select it, and go to supports. Now, here's where something comes into play that we'll talk about briefly. This Z height, Z lift height over here, it's at five millimeters. That means when you click to add supports like I just did, it lifts the model five millimeters off the base, okay? And you don't want to be kind of cheap with this uh, to save resin and say, well, Maybe I just need to lower it, you know, raise it off three millimeters because it's still off. Uh, that'll work. It won't work, and I'm going to show you why. So for now, let's move on and talk about the next little thing, which is this base flat. You do not want to print it like this uh, if you're on supports because this disc, as you can see, it's changing color all at once, meaning it's all going to print at once, which A would mean you'd have to support the hell out of it, right? But B, you have a huge disc causing a great amount of suction when that goes into the resin and then back out. It's going to lift off almost no matter what you do and ruin your print. So we need to go and tilt this. So we go for the red and we tilt it up. That's actually enough of a tilt because as you can see, if you go horizontally, you're not going to have a big disc anywhere once you tilt it even a little bit you get rid of that disc effect once you get past a few degrees so that's actually more than enough we we'll go back to the supports okay now you can see there is a low point of the model it's not all going to print at once it's going to start right down here right so that makes it easy to place supports because you have a low point so let's just see what the auto supports do okay auto supports so yeah, it doesn't look too bad, right? Because my first layer is here. But if you actually look at it, the first support is a little far away considering this is gonna print first. Look, this prints first, it's not supported. So I have auto supports on, right? And it's not gonna support this base properly. This is gonna fail. So you would need to come in and add heavy supports Now it won't fail. Now we can look at it from this angle and you'll see the starting point of the model is supported. Now one of the things that affects that is this Z lift height. So let me show you what I mean. First we'll get rid of all the supports and start over. If you lowered your Z lift height because you want to save some resin, have shorter supports and say, why the hell do I need to lift this thing up in the air? doesn't really make sense. But now watch. If we now do auto supports there's not enough room chitterbox doesn't believe to put a support here the way the settings are so it just doesn't put them so if your z lift height isn't large enough for any reason on a model and you auto support it just won't support areas that need to be supported and you have instant fail now 
if we give it a lot of room to operate and move that Z height up to eight, it again comes closer, but you still see there's unsupported areas that are gonna try to print when the print starts. So, uh, you know, auto support fail number two. So failed on the head, now it's failing on the base. Okay. Let's get this base out of here so we have room to look at this gunslinger. So the gunslinger. Let's say we're going to go now with conventional wisdom. Now we're going to talk about orientation. Most videos will tell you, you want your gunslinger to come out nice, pretty in the front. What you do is you take him, you tilt him back. Right? 45 degrees or so. Not this way, right? Flip him ooh, all the way around. And okay. So let's say we do, I don't know, about 50 degrees. Okay? Looks pretty good. People say, look, now you can the supports will be on the back. This is all going to be nice and pretty in the front. And I agree, it will be pretty in the front. But let's see what happens. Okay, the back of this model is going to look like absolute garbage. You're going to have holes, pit marks all over the place. And you say, well, you know, is that so bad? Well, well, hell yeah, it's bad. You have a resin printer to get a good print. And to be honest, think about it. When you're playing a, video, uh, a, a tabletop game, most of what you're looking at, your figures like this, you're going to see it from the back. So you want the back to look like crap just to, so the front can look nice. And the point of watching these videos is you want the back to look as nice as the front, quite honestly, and especially what if you're someone who takes their painting a little bit seriously. Uh, you don't want to be trying to fill in a zillion little holes in the back of your model. So conventional wisdom tells you do this. And if you believe that, uh, you believe Elizabeth Warren is Native American. It's, it's about the same level of believability. So what you really want to do, get those off. Let's go back here. Get them back to basically the starting position. Okay. Think about this. If I just supported them, lifted them up and supported them from here, a lot of the holes you would see would be on the underside of the model. I mean, this is this is still going to look terrible if I do it like this. Um, and part of the problem, if you try this, if you if the model's flat when you did it, see the look at the feet. The feet print all at once, but the supports only supporting a little portion of the feet. That means you're going to have a bunch of fail here. Okay, it's terrible. So again, auto supports are for the loss, not for the win. So this is where orientation comes into play. For me, I think if you want the best results, you tilt the model eh, 10, 15 degrees. Just enough so that you create a lower point on the model that you can support the model from. Okay. Once you have it at this low point, and I'm not going to place all the supports because that's going to be the subject for a, another video, but let's just do a little bit. So I've got my heavies. I'm going down to the first point on the model, right? I'm using my mouse to go down the model and see where the first point is right here. Boom. On this one right here. So to make it strong, everything that's going to print at first, I want supported. Okay, now I have a nice solid base for the model. Now here's, th here's the good part. Instead of tilting the model at 45 degrees and ruining the back of the model to support it, I can now place supports. Here's an island. Here's an island. I can place supports where you won't see them. So when I get the finished model, here's another island. When I get this finished model, you will not see these supports, okay? So the model is supported like hell. And down here is going to be a little bumpy and ugly, the underneath the model. But do you care? No. Okay. Here's another island. And now in here, there's no islands. It'll probably be okay. But, but since you can't see this, let's just support the model a lot more. It's a little overkill even, but you don't want a model to fail. There's no reason a model should ever fail like this. So 
what I might do when feet are thin, after I put all the heavies to make sure I have it secured, I might switch to lights or medium and then just say, pepper the foot close to the edge, but not touching the edge because I don't want to break the foot at all. And I go just even a little bit down the middle. So I'm, now my model, if I do that on both sides, that model is supported like hell. The back of the model is going to come out totally clean. I mean, I would have to add some support here, which I'll show you in another video. But basically, I'm going to make this model come out incredibly clean because I only tilted it back a little bit instead of the conventional wisdom of 45 degrees. Uh, the other reason people tilt models, they'll if you look at a chart, it'll show you that going by layer height, uh, tilting at certain angles will show layer lines less. But I throw that out the, the window with miniatures anyway because a lot of the miniatures, you know, angles change on the models, as you can see. Things are at different angles. There are curves. So those layer line calculations don't really apply so much when it comes to miniatures, at least as far as I'm concerned. And I'm way more concerned with not having uh, divots and pit marks and bumps on any part of the model that I can see if I can help it. So that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you learned something again. Please hit like and please subscribe. And I have more videos coming. Uh, the next video I'm going to uh, finish uh, placing supports. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Umber Hulk model, which we had started working on before. And I'm going to show you how to perfectly support this head and perfectly support the body so that Umber Hulk from Artisan Guild prints out beautifully. And then in the next video after that, I'm going to come back to this gunslinger uh, and I'm going to show you some trickier ways to do some supports to hit some of the problem areas uh, that, that you might find in a model like this, such as a little area here and some things like that. So anyway, again, hope you liked the video and I will hopefully see you again soon.